Welcome back to Squawk Box, everybody. There is concern of a potential second COVID wave across the globe. Earlier this week, China reported its highest number of daily cases since April. Hong Kong announced new restrictions amid a rise in infections. Japan reported a new daily record this week, and numbers in Spain and France are increasing. Also, the UK's health minister said further quarantine measures may be imposed amid fears of a second wave in Europe. Joining us right now to talk about this and much more is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He is former FDA commissioner and now a CNBC contributor. He's on the boards of Pfizer and Illumina. And Dr. Gottlieb, uh, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. You and I were texting back and forth earlier this week, and I know you've tweeted a little bit about this. We're, we're seeing a, a rise in, in places in Asia and Europe, but you think that there's a real risk that there's going to be a decoupling between the United States and the rest of the globe. Do you want to explain that theory? Well, we're seeing it right now. Um, if you're an American, you really can't travel to too many places around the world. The United States is one of only a handful of countries where the travel, large countries where the travel into Europe and Asia is fully restricted to American consumers right now. Um, it's hard. You can't go to Europe. You can't go to China um, right now if you're an American. And I think if, when you look at these other countries, what you're seeing right now are some outbreaks in some of these regions. Some of these countries are having isolated outbreaks. It remains to be seen whether or not they're going to be able to control that. They're taking pretty aggressive action, and there is some presumption that they will be able to control these outbreaks, that they're not going to have very dense epidemics heading into the fall and the winter, because they got the virus down to very low levels, and now they have the, the means in place with testing, with tracking and tracing, to try to keep the infection at bay. Now, that remains to be seen, but if they can't do it, it's going to be very hard, for example, for states in the United States that have gotten virus down to very low levels to similarly try to keep the virus there and not, not have very large epidemics heading into the fall. But I do think right now, when you look around the world, you are seeing the United States get decoupled from other countries in terms of our experience. And that could ultimately translate into lost opportunities for Americans relative to the rest of the world. Lost opportunities like what? Well, slower GDP growth, the risk that we tip back into a recession when the rest of the world is growing. Um, inability of the bulk of our students to go back to in-class learning for the, for the whole fall and winter. Um, lost business opportunities because we can't travel abroad while Europeans are allowing travel within Europe and Asia is allowing travel um, within Asia. So, you know, the United States is being isolated from the rest of the world right now. There's basically a cordon that's been put around the United States for most countries that we would normally be engaging with much more closely. I think we really haven't paid a lot of attention to that for now because there's not a lot of places we want to go. Uh, but, you know, as things evolve and if the rest of the world is able to keep this at bay and they just contend with outbreaks but they don't really have dense epidemics and they're able to get back to more of their normal um, way of life, I think the disparity is going to look sharper because I don't think that we're going to be able to crush this epidemic heading into the fall and winter. I think a best-case scenario right now is we have sort of a rotating series of regional outbreaks and maybe epidemics that we're able to largely get under control, but, but they're going to start to burn through the country heading into the fall and the winter.